have a King James Bible, you can open it up to Matthew chapter 24. We're going to read verses 32 through 35. It says here, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when his branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Now, if you study your King James Bible, back in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 24, I believe it is, it talks about figs being Judah, being Israel. You know, So the fig tree is a type of the nation of Israel. And it says here, Matthew chapter 21, back there in Matthew 21, Jesus Christ curses the fig tree, it dies. Matthew 24, Jesus says, when it's yet tender. So it comes back. Okay, That is a prophecy about the nation of Israel. The book of Revelation cannot be fulfilled unless Israel, unless the Jews are back in their homeland of Israel. It cannot happen. Okay, I mean, what are the two witnesses going over to Jerusalem, the streets of Jerusalem for if there are no Jews there? What would be the point? You say, the Christian church, they're, they're, the two witnesses are coming for the Christian church. Why? To show signs and wonders to convince us of the truth of Jesus Christ being our Savior? I don't need to see signs and wonders. The two witnesses are coming back. Moses and Elijah are coming back for the nation of Israel in the geographic city of Jerusalem. And right here you are seeing the prophecy about that. And it says here, This generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Talking about people. But let's see what the great pastor Stephen Anderson has to say about this. Away. Now, a very common theme amongst Zionists is that they like to talk about Israel as being the fig tree. And they say that in 1948, we witnessed the re-blossoming of the fig tree. They'll try to import that concept into Matthew 24 as being some kind of an end times fulfillment of prophecy, the re-blossoming of the fig tree. And it is. It's one of the most miraculous signs of the end times. How are you going to get a nation that whose government has been wiped out, whose people are scattered all over the world? James chapter 1 talks about that. James to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, gre greeting, you know. They're scattered all over the place. And yet you bring them back to their nation where they once were. You restore the language, the ancient language of Hebrew to the people. And... I'm not saying everybody there speaks Hebrew, by the way, but the ones that are, you know, the Orthodox Jews and things, they do speak Hebrew. But, you know, you bring them back, they have their own government, they're in their own country. This is somehow not miraculous, according to Stephen Anderson. Let's continue. And they say the fig tree is Israel. Of course, Matthew 24 teaches no such thing. But if you want to talk about Israel being the fig tree, here we have a great illustration of Israel when Jesus comes to a fig tree in the springtime and he seeks figs he seeks fruit on that tree he finds no fruit and he curses the fig tree and he says let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever forever and the tree withers away okay forever and the tree withers away um, did all the fig trees die at that point in time? No, just that one. So what was Jesus Christ trying to symbolize? He was symbolizing that that one tree, that generation where he was, right there, that nation of Israel, at that point in time, that group of people withered away, withered away and died. That's what he's talking about. And when he curses the fig tree, that's right there at that time, he says, let nothing grow on thee, one tree, forever. It doesn't mean that there will never be a fig tree again. We don't even know what figs are anymore because Jesus cursed all fig trees back there and, you know, and in the first century and they're all dead now. Of course not. Unless you're Stephen Anderson, then you'd believe that kind of thing. Let's continue. And it's never going to produce fruit again. That fig tree represents Israel. Jesus Christ came to Israel seeking for fruit. He found none. And now it's going to wither away. It's going to be cursed. It's never coming back. The Bible is clear. A lot of people say...
fact, the, Pastor Anderson, the re-blossoming of the fig tree in 1948. No, the, the fig tree withered away. He said it would never bring forth fruit forever. 11, the whole rest of the New Testament makes it clear that God was done with the physical nation of Israel and that he's turned unto the Gentiles in the New Testament. The only time the Israelites are, are coming back is when they're resurrected for the millennium. That's what Romans 11 actually teaches. Uh, he talks about the fact that in the millennium, when, when all the dead, of, uh, dead in Christ, all those who are saved from Old and New Testament are all resurrected, then the physical nation of Israel will again enjoy the land because they'll be all saved Christians who are, who are enjoying it. So there you have Anderson openly denying the prophecy, this great prophecy, one of the greatest prophecies that's ever happened of the rebirth of the nation of Israel. And he openly denies it. So it's, it's not that you know, the nation of Israel is no more, it's been cursed forever and everything else. Well, how could you explain this verse here then, uh, Stevie? Matthew 24, verse 15. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. Hmm. You go on verse 16, it says that then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Oh, well, it's the body of Christ. Okay, what are they doing in Judea? Strange. Very strange. But you can go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll start here at verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So you see the abomination of desolation again, scribed here, sitting in the temple here. And what is the temple for a Christian? Our bodies. How can the Antichrist stand in our bodies? Can't happen. Another huge problem for the post-tribbers, and they never can cover this thing. They never can do anything with it, okay? Because the accounts in the book of Matthew, in the four Gospels, they're primarily written to the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Here, what we have in the Pauline epistles is written to the church, the body of Christ, which leaves before the time of Jacob's trouble. But see, Anderson can't handle that. Anderson just has to kind of pretend that the fig tree, the rebirth of the fig tree, is not about the nation of Israel. Even though you read the book of Revelation, it's centered around the book or centered around the nation of Israel. Strange system that you have there, Anderson.